Back during the Cold War, we had Kremlinologists, and they studied everything that they could find, pictures, official notices, and so forth, to guess about what was happening in the Soviet Union. After all, it was a closed society. It had to really hunt and try to figure things out. Well, these days, I think we need Bidenologists, given that 95% at least of the time Biden and his campaign are completely closed off to any real questions or scrutiny. But every once in a while, Biden emerges and immediately starts to reveal his real agenda. Some have said a Trump stance is a good one um, to counter China's influence. Would you keep the tariffs? No. Hey, look, <laughs> who said Trump's would... idea is a good one? We're going after China in the wrong way. Well, for the entire 24-hour period that followed that exchange, his campaign and their media allies tried to clean it all up, claiming that Biden didn't really mean what he said on tariffs, that he'd get rid of them. Well, a Biden aide telling Bloomberg yesterday his position is unchanged. He would reevaluate the tariffs upon taking office. He was obviously responding to the notion that Trump's stance is a good one to counter China's influence. <laughs> nice try, kids. As if we didn't hear the word no in response to the question of whether he would keep the tariffs. Now, this is also where Bidenology comes in. Stay with me here. The day before that disastrous interview was released, Biden's team issued a statement that was supposedly written by the former VP himself. And what that means is that the statement was approved and vetted by his entire economic team. And it included the following key passage. Trump's phase one trade deal with China is failing badly. Even before the pandemic, Trump's go it alone trade war was hammering American workers, small businesses and farmers. Well, we Bidenologists know that phrase, the go it alone trade war, sends an important signal to the swamp. It means that Biden will not use his authority as president to impose tariffs on China and that he'll lift the tariffs that were imposed by President Trump. Furthermore, it means that he'll not take any actions against China unless they're supported by a significant block of other countries, which means, as a practical matter, the European Union. Now, you see, otherwise, he would be, quote, going it alone. That's exactly what he's saying he won't do. The Europeans are cutting deals left and right now with China, and they'll never agree to place tariffs on them, period. The Obama-Biden answer to China, I love saying O'Biden, oh, um, back in 2015 was the nightmare TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And by the way, it was so unpopular back home that even Hillary Clinton, one of the most committed globalists who ever lived, said the TPP would kill jobs, and she ran against it. But Biden still believes in the TPP, though maybe with a few face-saving tweaks. I would not rejoin the TTP as it was initially put forward. I would insist that we renegotiate pieces of that with the Pacific nations that we had in South America and North America so that we could bring them together to hold China accountable. Oh, what gibberish. He can't even get the acronym right. It's TPP, Joe. And I wouldn't pay much attention to this whole renegotiation language. The other TPP countries would just say, why would we renegotiate something you and Obama already agree to? And of course, they'd be right. You might see a few little changes here and there to help Biden politically, but then we'd be right back to a big push to join the job-killing TPP. For eight long years under Obama-Biden administration, American factory workers received nothing but broken promises and brazen sellouts and lost jobs. During the course of the next four years, we will bring our pharmaceutical and medical supply chains home. We're going to bring them home where they belong, and we'll end reliance on China. The choice could not be clearer. You have a president in Trump who spent real political capital. He got unending grief in order to get leverage over China. And he forced them to change their ways or face being cut out of our markets altogether. Now, Biden's team has decided to destroy all of that leverage and return to the fail, failed Obama approach of appeasement in trade policy. 
Now, they'll tell you that they intend to rally the world against China, but their own record shows that they have no chance of accomplishing that goal. This means a huge win for the CCP and a huge loss for American workers across the board. Joe Biden's entire career has been a gift to the Chinese Communist Party, and Biden personally led the effort to give China permanent most favored nation status. And as Vice President Biden was a leading advocate of the Paris Climate Accord, which was unbelievably expensive to our country. Yet one more gift from Biden to the Chinese Communist Party. It's a huge gift. Now, in, in short, you got to think about it this way. If you want to go back to the days of China first, America last, then Biden's your man. And if you like the idea of China unchecked, richer and more powerful than ever before, Biden's your guy. But if you like the idea of more goods made here in the USA, more jobs here, an America refusing to allow the communists to dominate the globe, then reelecting Donald Trump is an American necessity. And that's the angle.